solar panels on boats and controllers. And we, our guest speaker is Nigel. As you can tell from my smile, it's 100% genuine and always a pleasure. Nigel, thanks for joining us here today. Oh, thank you, Jeff. And, awesome. Uh, we asked awesome. you, we have a lot, lot to talk about. Yeah, there's, we do. Uh, there's been a raft of new technologies coming into the solar world in the last few years. And some of them as recently as last year, which have basically um, changed many of the prescriptions we've used for recommending panels on solar panels on boats. So it's a really good time to be talking solar. Okay, everyone. So we're going to dive into solar. Um, for all of you out there, um, I want to reemphasize how solar is a real tangible way for us to recharge our battery banks uh, from the sun. It's not only is it a good maybe environmental decision for some of us, certainly, um, but besides just the environmental reasons of doing that um, and not having to run a generator or recharge your batteries, both power boaters and sail boaters, and here in the Pacific Northwest, having done thousands of solar rates, I'd say it's about 50-50 sailboats and power boats. So this applies to all of us. And I'm talking 20-foot boats. I've done a solar array. Largest solar array we've probably done was on a 70-foot boat. 50-foot boats all the time. Power boats, 55, 60 feet, 30 feet, 28 feet. It doesn't matter. There is a benefit to solar to pretty much every power boater or sail boater that doesn't have a generator running 24-7. You know, some power boarders eventually have to run the generator forever. Well, uh, the power requirements are too high. Even those running generators, there's a big benefit to solar. Oh, there is. <laughs> um, and certainly for all of us, um, solar is something we have, many of us as boarders have, an, 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 let's just say, an area that is basically unused that is just facing the sun. It could be uh, your bimini, it could be a dodger, it could be a hard bimini, it could be a hard top on a power boat. It could even be a portion of the deck that you really don't go that often, a brow. You know, we've done it on brows. And so there's a lot of different ways of getting uh, solars on your boat. We'll talk about rigid, we'll talk about flexible, we'll get into all of that. But first, let's find the justification for doing so. And so with that, Nigel, I'm gonna give it to you because I've seen your presentation on that, by the way. And I have to say, you're such, I love it. You really did the analysis. And so give it to us, tell us about, uh, why should boaters consider solar on their boats? Well, I, I got, you know, 12, 15 years ago now, a, a large grant from the European Union with a couple of other guys to look at the uh, energy efficiency on boats. So we, we collected a lot of real data um, mm -hmm. and on uh, how much it actually costs to generate electricity on boats when we're running an engine, battery charging an anchor, or running a generator to power a battery charger. And um, I have just gigabytes of data. And the first time I processed all of this and I looked at the numbers and I came up with a cost per kilowatt hour of generating energy on the boat, I thought I had the decimal place in the wrong place. So I, I did it again and came up with the same number and I did it again and came up with the same number. And finally I realized the decimal place was in the right place. Wow. Um, it's almost impossible to generate electricity on a boat using a fossil fueled engine at uh, less than uh, two or three dollars a kilowatt hour. And you know, we're paying 10 to 20 cents at home per kilowatt hour. And uh, in fact, most people, when they're generating electricity on a boat, it's costing them between five and ten dollars a kilowatt hour. And when we're at the end of a charge cycle, when we're charging our lead acid batteries, battery charging at anchor we're spending about $20 a kilowatt hour for that last little bit of energy we're putting in the batteries. I mean, these numbers are pretty shocking. As I say, the first time I did it, they're right shocking. Time, I thought I had the decimal place, <laughs> point in the wrong place. And, um, and I've done these calculations uh, dozens of times and with different test data and so on, and it always comes out the same. Wow. And the, the core cost here, which we don't think about, is actually the amortization cost of the engine, because you know, most of our, uh, propulsion engines, for example, they're rated for 5,000 hours in a boat. Well, you spend uh, $20,000 putting that engine in the boat, and it's got 5,000 hours of life in it. It costs you $4 an hour to run it, regardless of whether it's doing any useful work. Mm. So then when you're at the tail end of the battery charge cycle, when you're putting a few amps into the batteries to stop them from sulfating, uh, you're putting out maybe a few hundred watts. It's still costing you $4 an hour plus the fuel, plus the maintenance, yeah. 
when you factor that in, you discover that your kilowatt hour cost is going up to 10 and 15 and $20 a kilowatt hour. So when you put solar in that light and you look at a like a 100 watt solar panel, um, it's going to put out about 300 uh, watt hours a day on a, so that's a third of a kilowatt hour. Um, you multiply that by 300 days in the year. And then you think about, you'd be spending $10 a kilowatt hour to generate that electricity using an engine. All of a sudden the solar looks to be a really good investment. Yeah. So for any boat that gets used a fair bit, obviously if you only use the boat for two weekends a year and you put $2,000 worth of solar on it, you're never ever gonna to get any kind of payback out of it. No. But if you use your boat for a month or two of the year or even live aboard, uh, and then uh, you compare the cost of the solar to the cost of generating that uh, electricity uh, by running an engine, a generator or the main engine, then the solar starts to look really good. And on top of that, of course, you've got less engine run time. You don't have to put up with the noise and the exhaust. Uh, you typically speaking, you keep your batteries in a higher average state of charge, mm. which substantially extends the battery life. So that's another uh, hidden benefit. benefit from the solar. Yeah. Uh, it, it all pencils out uh, in a way to where uh, I, I recommend uh, nowadays anybody that's going to take their boat offshore for, for even a, a week or two a year, uh, put as much solar on the boat as they can find space for. 100% agree. 100% agree. Um, and, and you bring a good point. I mean, not only is it obviously less expensive than running a generator recharge of batteries, but the other thing too is there's a certain, I mean, also the great thing with solar is all the costs are up front. You know, there's no maintenance cost. On a solar array, you know, I, when I did my solar array, it's nine years now. You know, nine years ago, all the costs were up front, and and they're substantial if you're doing a big array and if you're choosing, you know, better quality panels and you're doing it the right way and you're not cutting corners, and it can add up. It can certainly add up. But the flip side is, it's all front loaded. You know, that those costs are gone once you've done all that. Then every day that you're out there, and then you get not only the lower cost of energy production. But the other thing too, you're right, is to me, it's also even redundancy. You know, it's it's an alternative way. Like what, I mean, people do lose alternators, not literally losing an alternator, but the, the, the alternator, alternators have a tough life. It's really hard being an alternator. It's probably the, one of the hardest things to be on a boat. You know, they're working in a warm environment, super hot. Uh, they're asked to do these crazy things, running at maximum output for long periods of time to recharge our battery banks. And eventually they do fail. And um, the good news with solar is now you've got a redundant way of recharging your batteries. It might not be everything you want, but it's at least not zero. That's another thing too I like about solar. It gives redundancy and even redundancy when you're at shore power. You know, you might lose shore power for a couple of days, two, three days. Now your solar array can, you know, keep up, pick up the slack. Here in British Columbia, I don't know what it's like you guys out in on the Eastern seaboard, but here, when you go to Marina and you're staying for overnight, they're going to actually ask you if you're taking power from the dock, they're going to charge you more. You know, mm -hmm. some slips include power, but some slips it's optional and you'll pay an extra five or ten dollars for power that night. You know, in the summer, I have to say one of the greatest pleasures I have is when I'm cruising from May to September and they ask me that question, would you like power with your slip overnight? I'm like, no, nope, all good. I don't even take out the cord. You know, I, I don't need to. Solar just literally is taking care of all my needs in the summer because the sun's shining enough. And I'm literally, I'm not counting how much money I'm saving every time I go to the dock, but I certainly don't need to plug in. I just don't. I mean, I'll plug in sometimes if I need to, but sometimes if I'm there just for a night or two, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm not, I'm in the full state of charging my batteries and solar can do that. So that's another benefit of having a solar array. Yeah. yeah um, but every time you don't plug in your, uh, Eliminating the risk of galvanic corrosion on the shore power cord. So we we mm. actually uh, even though you know we have the galvanic isolator and all that stuff, um, I still plug in as little as I can, and I'll plug in to rapidly charge the batteries, and then I'll unplug again. Yeah, I, 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 I never leave our boat plugged in to shore power on a, on an extended basis. Yeah, because it's sometimes it's it's not your boat; it's the neighbor's boat. Yeah, you know and, uh, um, that happens a lot. We 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 get called, you know. Sometimes it's a whole section on a dock. There may be three, four, five boats, and the owner—it's not a bad owner. Sometimes it's just an owner that it's an accident. They didn't know something 
you know, something happened that's unintentional. Uh, it's not always the derelicts. You know, some boats, of course, unfortunately, are abandoned or near abandoned. And those boats are, some of them, obviously questionable. And, you know, the electrical is maybe something to be worried. But sometimes it's, it's a boat that you wouldn't even think, you know, you're thinking, oh, that boat won't give me grief. Um, but errors do happen on boats. And you're right. Um, also, if you found this video interesting, please subscribe. Um, it honestly it does. It does help us to know that all this time that we're investing is actually we're reaching a lot of voters. And I want to thank all of you for watching. Thanks for spending some time with me.